Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look that way? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects. Whether it's a door that sticks, or a disorganized closet, or an AC unit that only works half the time. It all matters. You just haven't taken care of it yet. But there's an easier way. Just download the Thumbtack app. You can search for what you need done and find tons of highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Check prices, reviews, and book a pro right on the spot. Plus, you'll know what to tackle next, because Thumbtack is the app that shows you what to do, who to hire, and when. Pull out your phone, and in just a few taps, say goodbye to all those unfinished home projects, and say hello to caring for your home the easier way. Download Thumbtack and start a project today. Call from mom. Answer it. Call silenced. Instacart knows nothing gets between you and the game. That's why they make ordering from your couch easy. Stock up today and get all your groceries for the week delivered in as fast as 30 minutes without missing a minute of the game. You have 47 new voicemails. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. Here's a music aficionado, Bernie Miklas, joining us from St. Louis. We're going to talk a little Cardinals. Bernie, welcome. Uh, good to be with you again, Bob. And uh, well, Bob's son. <laughs> that's yeah. me. Here I am. We do appreciate yeah, the it, Bernie, family. of course. It's a pleasure. Thank you. God, sorry. <laughs> KFNS, his radio station in St. Louis. They uh, start their show here at 3 o'clock. So, Bernie... I read everything you write about the Cardinals. I've been a fan, as you know, for a long, long time. Uh, today we learn of uh, Dylan Carlson going on the IL. He'll be replaced uh, by Victor Scott III, and I think uh, Victor Scott is destined to be a great Cardinal. Uh, but the Cardinals, in my opinion, go into this season with very few sure things, and I like sure things. Uh, do you disagree? No, I don't. Uh, I don't disagree. I, I, I probably feel better about, or maybe I should say, maybe I feel more confident in their offense than perhaps you do. But uh, no, they've got a lot to prove, and uh, talk doesn't do it. I mean, they say in the off season. They said this. They said that. They're going to work on this. They're going to improve that. They're going to go to training, spring training, and they're you know they're going to. Uh, work on having a better clubhouse. The attitude's great. You know, the vibe's great. Everything's positive. And that's all fine. Uh, I understand the need to say that in a way, but uh, they, they got to prove it on the field. And there's still a lot of questions with them. I, I do think the offense will come through, but um, I, you know, we all wonder about starting pitching. I, I think they're going to get a lot more innings from that group. And I think that is, there's a lot of value in innings. I think the bullpen will be fine, um, but it won't be fine if Helsley can't pitch uh, enough or Gallegos is as bad as he was last year. Then it's a different story. That's what we're talking about. And the thing that I've been harping on for going back to last year, and I've never let up on it. I mean, seriously, I'm like obsessed with it, but for a good reason. They have got to have a good defense behind this pitching staff. I mean, they undercut. Listen, I'm not trying to say the Cardinals pitchers were good last year. They weren't. But this horrible defense undercut them all season long. That just simply cannot happen again. So I hope they're telling the truth when they say they're determined to, to improve this defense this year. Time will tell. So uh, an injury uh, among the position players, Dylan Carlson, could lead to a, an upgrade if Victor Scott is, at, is as advertised and performs well to start the season. An injury to the pitching staff, uh, Sonny Gray 
obviously there's not going to be an upgrade from that. They go into this season with, uh, I would say, five guys who probably their peak is, is league average. Is that fair, or do you think they have a higher ceiling than that? Well, it's – you know, my my theory on it is a little. I don't think it's convoluted, but I, but it's. I, I just kind of um, I, I kind of look at it in, in, in a different way because I, I, I'm, I'm I'm a numbers nerd and I'm always doing research. And the fact is, when the Cardinals have gotten six innings or more from a starter in a game, their winning percentage is exceptional. And that doesn't even matter. I'm not even taking into account how many runs they allow in those six innings. Just by going deeper into games, uh, they have more of a chance to win. And, and factually and statistically, it shows that they win at a high percentage when they get six innings. And so they have a, st- of, of a rotation that's more capable of delivering that, much more capable if they all stay healthy. And the one stat, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you one brief stat on that. Um, when the Cardinals last season, and we all know how horrible they were, but – when they got six innings or more from a starter, they were 10 games over 500. When they didn't get six innings, they were 30 games below 500. Think about that difference, right? So I, I, I think the innings capability is much higher, and I do think that will make a difference. But, you know, uh, even better if you pitch well, you know, that there's some quality in those innings too. But again, that's another reason why the defense is a must. They got to play better defense. Long time St. Louis sports commentator, Bernie Miklas is our guest. And before I ask you my baseball question, Bernie, I know you're, you're a, a Baltimore guy uh, and the bridge collapsing. Tell us, uh, boy, that is, that was scary. That is scary stuff. I would imagine you have some experience on that bridge. Oh yeah, I, I, listen. First, my, first of all, my wife told me, you know, I, I had I, I have my phone set to uh, to get alerts from like the Washington Post, and there's always alerts, and so sometimes I just like, don't pay attention to them. Uh, but my wife told me this, you know, really early this morning. You know, she said, you know, the, in Baltimore. You know, some big ship like ran into a bridge and and it collapsed. And I said, "Well, what bridge?" And she, you know, she told me she didn't know. And I found out it was the Key Bridge, of course. And yeah, I mean, I, I crossed over uh, to and fro that bridge uh, many, 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 many times. My brother um, and his wife live five minutes away from the Key Bridge, and his wife who works at Johns Hopkins Hospital, uh, she used that bridge every workday to go to work and to come back home from work. And so they're stunned. Everyone there is stunned. I'm, I'm, I'm at a long distance from there, but I'm stunned too. I really, uh, what a horrible, horrible tragedy. And how does that even happen? I mean, I, I mean, how, how do you ram a bridge? I mean, it's just, um, it's just, a uh, yeah, it's bewildering, and you know, it's just, it's just a, it's a tragic loss of life that was completely avoidable. It seems to me. Thanks for asking, man. Thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, well, back back to baseball, a happier topic. You mentioned the offense, and I too have hopes. But I know it's spring training, Bernie. But I am I crazy to be concerned about Paul Goldschmidt because he has had an atrocious spring training coming off a down year for him. Uh, what are you to make of it? Well, it, it's kind of my, my, my historical position is to just discard most, not all, but most spring training stats. I mean, if somebody's trying to make the club and they got something to prove and there's a competition, well, they need to put up some numbers. He doesn't really need to. How, that, now that said, to your point, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen him uh, get some hits. You know, it's so it does raise uh, it raise a little concern. Um, you know, we'll, we'll find out once they start playing real ball. But uh, it, you know, it, I, I think everybody would be feeling more comfortable if he had had kind of a normal spring training. You know, it didn't have to be great, but just kind of a normal spring training. So there's going to be a lot of scrutiny on that. And you know, that's baseball. That's the way it is whether we think spring training is important or not. 
because he was going to go into the final year of his contract with something to prove anyway. I mean, even though he hit the ball as hard as ever last year, you know, his numbers were down. I think there was some bad luck involved. But, you know, he, he's he got a lot on the line. This is a huge year for him, and he's obviously very important to the Cardinals. Isn't that uh, ultimately what matters? The I mean, I guess I'll reframe the question and say, what what do you think the Cardinals most use to evaluate players? Because now, even in spring training, it doesn't necessarily have to be about numbers if you're hitting the ball hard and you have good exit velocities and, and all these numbers uh, that people look at. Is that is that more important now to the Cardinals than it has been, do you think? How hev- heavily into analytics are they? Yeah, I think they're getting better. I, I think they let that area slide. You know, Bill DeWitt, to his uh, credit, long, long time ago, he was ahead of the curve, you know, when he brought in uh, Jeff Luno to kind of uh, set up a new way of evaluating talent and putting a roster together, and it was a smashing success. So Bill, so Bill DeWitt had some real foresight. But unfortunately, like so many things that, that apply to the organization, you know, they – they were so successful for a long time, and nobody should forget that. I mean, I have a lot of respect for what they've done in 28 years. He's owned the team. It's pretty pretty extraordinary. However, they got set in their ways. They let things lapse. They didn't adjust. They didn't adapt, and they fell behind. And that that's what that's the only thing about this that makes me a little mad is that it, you know they could have done a better job of staying on top of things. And they let that model just get stale. And so they we they paid the price for that last season, just pretty much every area. Um, but they they they've used analytics, um, and I think they're gonna they're gonna try to incorporate it even more, and uh, particularly on the pitching side. That's where they really fell behind. And I I think that's a dang shame because the Cardinals' strength for many years uh, was drafting, developing their own pitching. And they've been really successful at it. And that just dried up over the last few years. And that's why they were in such desperate straits. Uh, You know, uh, they they had to go out and get two starting pitchers at the deadline in 21. They had to do it again in 22. And then last season, the whole thing just crashed. Um, And if if they had a – if they still had a a very uh, productive – pitching program where they're where they're bringing really good pitchers to the major leagues on a consistent basis none of that would have happened but they lost their way with that and i think that's i think that's like the number from a from an organizational standpoint i think that's their number one challenge they've got to they've got to get that pitching production line in their own system they got to get that working again and that's where i think heim bloom can make a huge difference um, you know, the long time with Tampa Bay, then Boston, and he, he got a raw deal in Boston, but he's really smart when it comes to pitching. I think he had a lot to do with some of the relief moves they made, they made, pardon me, to strengthen their bullpen this off season. So uh, there's, they're, 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 they're going to try there's I think they finally woke up and said, you know, wow, you know, we really let this thing slide. We got to make changes. So they're starting to do that. We'll just see how fast they can do it. Paul Goldschmidt doubled in his first at bat against the Cubs today, so forget everything I said. I'm back on board. He, he heard you. <laughs> he heard you. <laughs> so but before we let you go, Bernie, uh, the Cardinals have a really difficult April schedule. 24 of their first 26 games are against teams that were in the playoffs last year. What do they have to do uh, in this brutal schedule uh, to appease the fan base and and allow people not to throw their hands up and give up hope? There's a lot of anger here. Uh, You probably know that. I mean, it's amazing. People are just really frustrated and ticked off, and there's there's almost like this fatalistic attitude. You know, people, the the Cardinals uh, just kind of, you know, upset everybody's uh, world last year because they were so horrible, and, it's almost like there's an assumption that everything they do is not good enough. And so we'll see. I, I, I look at, all right, if we're talking about the first month or so, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not settling for this. I'm not saying like, Oh, okay. Well, if they're, they finish 500, that's great. I'm not saying that, but at minimum, I'd like to see them at 500. But I also did a, I did a little historical study, um, 
a couple of weeks ago. And some of the best teams they've had got off the slow start. So that's the beauty of baseball. You, you know, you got 162 games to prove yourself. Like uh, all teams during the course of the season are going to have brutal stretches of schedule. Every single team in the big leagues, it's just the Cardinals. One of their most brutal parts of the schedule just comes right away. So that puts some pressure on them, but um They'll, they'll, you know, especially if the NL Central is going to be as wide open as so many people think, um, even if they slip early, they'll have time to recover. So, uh, but I think I, I kind of look at it a different way as well. You know, if, if I'm a Cardinals player or I'm have anything to do with that team, I would, I would crave this opportunity because everybody knows that's because we all write about it and talk about it. Oh man, the schedule's tough. Boy, they this they could be for for a terrible April or whatever. They know they know what's being said. And if I were them, man, um, to be the great greatest way to start a season is basically to shut us all up, right? And uh, they don't need motivation, but it, you know, there's a little extra fire can help. So I, I you know, I, they ought to use this as an opportunity to to right away show, yeah. That season's gone. It's in the trash. It, it's in history. We're not that team anymore. So I look at it as, hey, it's an opportunity. Take advantage of it if you can. Bernie, good insight. As always, we appreciate it. You got your show starting there in St. Louis in uh, about 20 minutes. Uh, thanks so much. It's always good to talk with you. And, well, listen, any time, you can call on me more uh, more frequently. We'll uh, Next time we'll talk about how great uh, Victor Scott II is because he's uh, they don't have a player like him. He should have been on the team even before the injury. He really should have. So, uh, he's I'm a really exciting he player. He really, Thanks, really Bernie. is. So I'm, I'm, you take care, Bob. Celebrate and save at Ashley's Anniversary Sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. Why? Why? If you Why? have T-Mobile 5G home internet, you might be hearing this Why? a lot. Why? Every time your internet slows down during the busiest hours. Why? Why? Because your network gives priority to cell phone users. Why? Why? Good question. Why not switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours? Okay. Stop the whys and visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles, and Toyota has them, with more coming in. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concern about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon-neutral future in vehicles, and in manufacturing plants, too, in the years ahead. The materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places.